and my first um, encounter with uh, the Toxteth area was I was actually born down there. I was born in X Street, which is just, it's not there now, but there's an X Grove, I think. Um, we were part of a demolition programme way back in the early 50s and we were moved out then to speak. But always, I think once you have an association with Toxteth, you're always drawn back to it in some way or another. I eventually got married and ended up going back to Toxteth to live. I then lived in Eversley Street with my first husband. Um, we, and my daughter was born down there in Sefton General, where I was born. I was born Just, there yes, as well. Yes, I think everybody yeah. was, right? <laughs> I say um, I was born in the, old, in the Asda. Yeah, that that's it. I think they've just got Asda and Lunatic Asylum still so down there. Um, uh, that marriage broke up after a few years and I moved back out of the area. I then moved back into the area um, to run the post office in Granby Street in, I think that was about 76, 77, yes. I went down there and stayed there until the early 80s. Got to know all the people while the people in Toxteth um, take you to the heart. Yes. Um, very kind, very generous to you. You have, in a sense, got to know how to handle the people and if you're very sort of basic and down to earth with them and I don't mean acquiesce to everything they want but just, just get along with and, them yeah. yes then you have a very good relationship and a very good working life down there and my husband and I were down there you know, till um, the late 80s when we sold up and moved on we then bought the post office back again because my husband missed it so much how many how many years of a gap did you have in between um, I think only two or three we, we sold it on to another couple who couldn't really settle in the area um, she was of the opinion that she could uh, um, control the people. What she was trying to control, I don't know, but they had a very hard time down there. Anyway, we, we bought the post office back from them then and um, stayed there. And the, the only reason we left there is I, in later life, must have said yes one night and ended up pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> and had, a, had a, a, another child in my 40s. So we, we had to um, leave again. We were then out of the post office and moved on to Liverpool 7, actually, mm -hmm. in Hull Road. So we were never far, far away. Yes. And our, our um, customer base sort of flitted between us. We've always been associated. We still go down there. We have lots of friends down there. Only now, of course, getting to our age, a lot of our friends are dying off down there. So we have less and less reason to go. Saying that, um, it's such a, a friendly and, and inviting area that my son now, who is 22, is desperately looking for somewhere to live. So how it's gotten into his bloodstream, I don't know, because he doesn't really have an Must association. Must be a natural family Absolutely, yeah. There. It's probably all the talk, really. And, yes. and seeing people that we've known um, you know, throughout our lives, being associated with them. So you just mentioned about your son wanting to go back, being oh, yes. very keen to go back. Yeah. And obviously you say maybe it's the way you've been talking about the area and you can feel the vibe of well, it Well, that's right. Well. And I think having no fear of the area, then, um, you know, he's very comfortable, you know, in that, in that um, environment. A lot of people in Liverpool, um, you know, have suspicions about the area and are fearful. Why would you area. say that is... Well, they don't know it, and they've never sort of gone into the area. They they obviously believe a lot of what they read in the press as well. And if, if you know the area, you actually know the Toxteth area. It's quite a small area. But if something bad happens, it extends from Otterspool to the city centre. It certainly does. <laughs> there's a place to know there it as well. <laughs> <laughs> You know, so that's well an example of that is sorry that's Maxine Brown over there um, <laughs> an example of that I, I used to work at Radio Merseyside for oh, example right. and I remember something happening and or I was told that while the riots were going on you had press agencies from around the country mm. phoning up oh no sorry something happened in Croxteth and you had press agencies yeah. phoning up saying are you sure it's not toxic are you sure it's yeah, not toxic because people wanted to be absolutely absolutely people wanted to be yeah. so while, during your time or around the time you had the post office mm -hmm. or gave it up when did the riots happen in relation to your time um, well, we'd actually sold the post office um, and then I think it was probably six to twelve months later the riots happened and my husband so ambitious in life 
Well, the reason we sold the post office the first time, I went into another office. My husband all his life wanted to be a taxi driver. Such an ambition. This, lad went, <laughs> this man went to private school, the hell works, yeah. wanted to be a taxi driver, black acne cab. So anyway, that's what he did. He bought himself a acne cab. And, you know, off he went. And he did that for about two years until he realised it was quite hard work. <laughs> and he couldn't make any money because too much talking. Um, so... For, for, for those two years, he then came back into the post office with me, and uh, we then bought Granby Street Post Office back. Okay, yeah, yeah. okay. So we were missing out of the area probably for about three or four years in all. And what changes have you seen over the years? Oh, it's, it's just cycles all the time. It never seems to get there, you see. It just doesn't ever get completed and get there. But I think this is you know, much the same in every city. The closest area to the city is always immigrants, you know, and, and people coming into the area. They just all, and this goes for um, Cardiff and Liverpool, Leeds, everywhere is always this transient, plus the students as well, you know, always go to the nearest drop-off point in a city. So it's very difficult to sort of lay it waste and start again and whether that's the right thing to do or not but w with the Toxteth area they seem to right well we'll do this and we'll knock this down and we'll build this but nothing ever s they'll build that and then they won't do anything here nothing has ever seemed to be completed at all why that is I don't know whether it's just the you know the next stage of you know immigration I know when we had a big Somali intake, you know, with the, the civil wars and everything that were going on in Somalia, you know, which were horrendous, and I absolutely adore Somali people, which is not what the majority of people in this city say. Yes. But I, I like Somali people, I like their way of life, you know, and everything, and, you know, what they stand for. Um, but I think when that happened, and people, were, people in the area quite against, were quite yeah. against the Somalis coming in, then I think everything else went by the wayside. And I think this is what happens when you have big influx of people coming into an area, different people. Then things tend to stop. Mm. Because the Somali community was, and in a way still is, the quickest growing community yeah. in the area. Yeah, so that so. So, so that has ignited a little bit yeah. of anti, yeah. you know, feeling against, so. the but yeah. against the Somali community. Yeah. This is it. And I think it takes a while then for it to settle down and, you know, then we'll start again. But I don't know what will ever... It's very sad, actually, because the architecture and, you know, the infrastructure and everything down there is fabulous. Why it can't all just be got together and got going. Uh, I've been in New Zealand for two years. Oh, fantastic. What were you doing there? I was busking my way around. Really? So, like, did you go all over? Uh, yeah, I went around most of the country. And that supported you, like you live in Oh, America. yeah, it's fucking, sorry, flipping easy <laughs> money. Fine. It's like 200 quid an hour, it's ridiculous money. Seriously? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd love to get out there, like, uh, I was talking to one of my friends recently, she's going next year. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And like, the job scenes over there is so much better than here. It's easy money, to be honest, it's, it's fucking, it's nicer. Yeah. Nicer folk and the likes. Although, I came back to Liverpool because I love it so much, to be perfectly honest. Oh, do you think you'll ever go back? Uh, well, I got deported because I was there illegally, so I can't go back, <laughs> to be perfectly honest. So, um, let's see. You guys are playing football, right? Right now? Yeah, we've come from football. Ah, you do it on uh, on a different... You don't play on the streets, or...? No, not not now. When we were younger, we did, but now we play, like, proper organised games with, like, ah, yeah. injuries and stuff like Is that. Is it, like, so 11 to 11 or 5 yeah, to 5? Yeah, 11 to 11, so yeah. teams. Yeah. Is it easy to, to play here? Is it, like, to organise everything? Here. To play football around yeah. here, no, it's not easy at all. We used to play on um, Toxtaf Astro, but then Toxtaf Astro's got um, ripped up and the fire, the, someone about the fire service said they're going to come in and build on it where we play football. But, so we've got nowhere to play anymore now. Yeah. But they said um, they're going to fix it up, but they said about round now, but maybe it's winter time, few months. Yeah, so we don't it? know. And we used to play on there for free, but now they're, they're making it to some big commercial thing, so you've got to pay now. Really? You have to pay to play football? Yeah, now you do. 
Uh, how much did you have to up? pay then? I don't know, probably on other sports centres, probably like 16, 17, 18 pound an hour. Really? Yeah, something like that. So yeah, you, you, all oh, right. If you want to play, then you have to pay uh, money just to, yeah, to, to, to use the territory. The TF, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You can play on the parks and stuff, but they're not really suitable for football. Yeah. Twenty-five pound an hour. Twenty-five pound an hour. Dingle Astro as well. That's the fairest to us. Yeah. So probably even going to be more because the TF's going to be better, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Out now. So got nowhere to play now. Yeah. And eleven aside as well. With our team, we're based around here. Yeah, late. I and mean, there's two teams around here called L8 and Kingsley United. But the kids can only play on one turf and that's Tybet and it's too small, so maybe under 14 is maximum. So the team's old enough have to go to Walton in the morning at 9 o'clock and go to Jericho on, in Ottersfield and go to Simpsons in Hellwood. So you've got to wake up about 8 o'clock in the morning just to play your 11 a side game. Yeah. When you're at this age, 18, 17, so. You'd rather be in bed, of course. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you like football more not that much. <laughs> Two days you get off, you get early, so. Yeah. So we've just come from the County FA Walton Hall Avenue. It took us a, lot, a long time getting there, so. Oh, well. And the buses aren't, aren't the best as well. That's why I was saying, if we went up to Walton, there's exactly a Yeah, taxi. yeah. Wow. We wow. took We took us two buses in about an hour and a half, an hour and a bit. To get there. To get there. And oh. the same back. Yeah. So, but Ottersport, Jericho is not that bad, but it's still far. It's, it's you could cycle there or get like one bus. Yeah, yeah. Did you still, win? Did you win the game today? Yeah, we won. Yeah, how much? Three nil. Three nil. Yeah. And who scored? You did. <laughs> you, you are. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really. Money. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Quarters on a, at a good time. Yeah. How's how's uh, living in Tuxted for you guys? Is it do you living like it? Living in Tuxted. Yeah, yeah, I don't, yeah. yeah, I like it. Yeah, yeah. I've been, I've been since I was born. I just stayed yeah. around here. So you want to stay also when you you grow up? Is it something yeah. like you want to stay in neighbor? You don't. Maybe you some people want to move away to get like a better a better life than stay yeah. around these kind of area. But some people want to see like how how the area can grow. You know? Yeah, but yeah. Some people just want to. Get a job and get out of here. Is that good. you? You want to get a job and get out? I want to go to Spain. <coughs> to Spain? Live my life out in Spain. Really? Why? Yeah. <laughs> you <laughs> Is it because of the, the nice weather and the... Yeah, yeah. yeah. And the girls and that. And the girls. <laughs> yeah, that's, oh, that was my next question. <laughs> you have a girlfriend, a Spanish girlfriend? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, oh, great. She can fly out. Yeah, yeah. And where is she from? Barcelona. Boston. Barcelona. Yeah, great. I think Dora. You've been to Barcelona. We we'll love to oh, hear this. Nice. You've been to Barcelona as well. Yeah, you it's like it? Year six, it was decent. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> about eleven. I was about eleven years old then. <laughs> <laughs> oh, great. <laughs> um, no, I, I don't think I have any more questions. That's it. Okay. Thanks a lot Guys, for, uh, a lot for your time. Okay. Yeah. Welcome. Nice Welcome. Welcome. Bye. Take care. See you later. Uh, I'm going to see Everton on Monday. Do you have any advice on how to dress? Do I have to have blue or what is Everton? Yeah, go for the red. The shirt, Everton. Hey, you're bad. <laughs> you're bad. <laughs> that Everton. Not very good. The area. Have said that one. No, the um, people in Everton like to support Liverpool and Everton. Uh, they so they told me I should go on because this is the Belgian player. He said on you know, Monday there's a game against Newcastle. Yeah. Are you going to yeah. watch the match? I, w- I would love to. I have never been to a, a UK football game. Yeah, yeah they're good. The you know, the amazing. atmosphere is amazing. Yeah. I don't know about Goodison, like Anfield is. Anfield. Anfield. Anfield is where where well, Liverpool is. It's small like and compact. It's an old-fashioned stadium. Yeah, good here, and there's like, a little park. Stanley Park. Stanley Park. And then it's with a parkway. Yeah. Just on the side of the park. I reckon you should watch the stadiums. Yeah, I do. Yeah, I think so. But when are they playing? Uh, they're playing today. Liverpool are playing today at Sunderland away. Mm, so. Yeah, no, that's. The next game will be home. Probably. Nah, um, they're playing the United October, next weekend. So if you could get to that match, that'd be. At home or at Manchester Anfield, United Manchester here. Big rivalry. Oh yeah, yeah. Anfield next Sunday. The game last season, United. Cup, I'm sure it was yeah, I can imagine. Yeah. You all have to sit down right here in in, uh, in yeah, the UK. Yeah, because there's, there's, there's places like in the cop you can stand up. You know what I mean? It depends because like, uh, the hills were and stuff like that. Yeah, they've, they've demolished like stands. But so this is b- before down. your time, right? The before hills were. Yeah. I've never seen. I've never that's seen. Um, I've never been to a game where you had to stand. Yeah. Really? Maybe I, I, you always have to sit down, but maybe non-league games and stuff like that. Lower down the leagues, you could stand up. Yeah. But not in the Premier League at all. You're not allowed to. Like Again, safety, health, health and safety. Health and safety. There's a chance. Yeah, yeah. Oi. 
All right, thank you very much. Uh, Belgium. So Marwan Fellaini. Yeah, Fellaini and then uh, Eden Hazard. How's the weather there? Uh, same here. It's kind of less rain, but not that. I mean, it's it's not like Spain. Yeah. <laughs> Spain is good weather. That's definitely the climate everybody wants to go. But uh, what language do Belgium speak? Like four languages, don't they? Uh, French, three, German. Three, yeah, French, German, Dutch? and uh, yeah, Dutch. We call it Flemish. It's like Flemish. Yes, it's got so what? Yeah, you've what? got like like British English and American yeah. English. It's like that kind of difference. We have the same grammar, but can you speak all three? Uh, no, I don't speak German. I do speak French, uh, English, of course, now and uh, Flemish. Flemish is my mother tongue. Bonjour. Bonjour, yeah, we oui, oui, bonjour. <laughs> <laughs> Do you get la French at school? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I've been doing it for. I've done it when I was in school since year seven to year ten. I was like four. Yeah. Three years, three years. So you get this kind of it base that you school, understand you a little bit. Some so primary Spanish, school, yeah. In primary school, in Spanish, and then in secondary school, in French. So yeah, it was all right. you guys are also, still yeah. at school. How does it work? Is it like you have uh, um, you colleges got, when you're higher, or how um, do? You? No, it's um. From There's nursery when you're like four or five, four, three or four, three or four, and then you're five. Then you go to school until you're eleven. Yeah. Then that's your primary school. Then you got the secondary school when you're eleven to you're sixteen, and then you go on to your sixth form of college just before like yeah. university could, stage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're in college from year ten, like while you're doing school part time college, you're still sending out to college. You can do from year if ten. If you want to do manual then stuff. Like yeah, 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 yeah. Like is this yeah. what you guys are doing now? Or? No, we stayed on in school. You so left school, yeah. I'm in, we, I'm in college now, but we yeah. stayed on. Instead so of how old are you now? Got part time college, part time yeah. school. You could do full time school. You can't do full time college when you're four, 15. That's right. So when you're 16, that's when you can do full time college. So now I do A levels in college. So yeah, I left school. Do an ICT level three. So that's Tara, right? Yeah. 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 Our school was like three miles away though, so we had to get a bus, like one bus to school, because it was in Allerton, you know where Allerton is? It's it's down, 20 minute bus journey. 20 minute bus journey. Oh, near the secondary yeah. school's not even in the Toxted area, is it? It's Dingle. <laughs> is, is, there's no secondary school here? No. The closest one are girls' schools. Really? Yeah, and there's, girls there's yeah. two girls' schools. There's no, the, the, I mean, for boys, you've got to go miles away. I mean, you've got you Shorefields, which is... It's not really that far, but it's still yeah. still kind of far. And you got Allerton and Garston um, yeah. and from North my house Hillbrook. where I live, I only live there. And from my house to my building in Coldstones was um, 3 point 3.1 miles away. So that way you got close. bus passes and stuff like that, but the journeys. It is a it's not track that bad. Me so meant to call yeah, these. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Bit of a mission. Now call it, I get this bus pass. Give us a <laughs> <laughs> Arriva. <laughs> <laughs> Expires on midnight, so you still uh, you go back and then then you still can use it. When are you planning to go back? No, they do it by terms. So that's yeah. till so Christmas. Every day. Till oh, Christmas. you use it every day. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and to give it in. And yeah, yeah, yeah. One. And then if he loses it, his parents give him a slap around the ear. <laughs> yeah, because it costs money. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> All right, thank you guys. Okay. Thank guys, you very much. So yeah. Okay. If if um, if you would have like a slot on television. Um, like like uh, national broadcast or anything like that. What would you like to talk about? Um, talk about uh, actually diving, skin diving, skin diving, skin diving, salvage. What's that? I don't know. I uh, don't oh know right. Oh well. Yeah. No, but you go underwater with tanks on your back and yeah. masks and flippers and everything. You know, they yeah. all kitted out, and you go down to these wrecks. You know, yeah. But the ones that you can't touch it, are, are the ones that, that have had bodies in them. You know, they're, they're sort of sealed up. They're, yeah. they're like basically uh, a coffin. That's what the class does. So you, yeah. you don't go near them. You always need permission to go near them from the government. Yeah. And is this something you do? You did as I young, used to. Yeah. I used to. You've been a kind of a diver for, for a long I've, time? I've, I've done, well, a while. About 15 years. Oh. I done that for. Yeah, and was it for your own, uh, for your own time or? Yes, yeah, my own yeah. enjoyment. Yeah. My own enjoyment. And and uh, where did you do that? Not all around the world. Really. Yeah. Oh. And what was the for you like the most memorable thing dive you've done? Well, put it this way: every dive always always sticks in your mind. But it's like being in a um, big cinema. Wherever it, wherever you look, there's no gaps. It just carries on, just carries on, carries on. Just like when you're filming, it just carries on like that. Da, 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 da. That's the way it is. Yeah. You know, and that's the buzz that you get out of it, plus the wildlife. You know? Yeah. You know, the fish, 
crabs, lobsters, sharks, anything. Yeah. You know, that's you know, that's what's all involved, isn't it? Yeah. It's all right, I'm gonna have a sleep. I'm not on TV. <laughs> <laughs> You miss that on TV right now? The, Sorry. Do you, do you miss that that kind of programs? I mean, you have it like National Geographic, but you don't like that kind of programs about diving. Oh, I love I love anything about time. I love anything about uh, gardening. Uh, I love anything about uh, cultivating stuff. No, I don't mean drugs neither, because I don't like anything like that. I don't agree with it. Mm -hmm. But everyone's choice. Yeah. I, I'm the old school. This is it, this is it. Young, young ones walk around the weed and the mountain teeth are big. I go like that, but when you get older and your brain doesn't work, I go, hang on. The old guys are still walking around, still thinking all the time. Yeah. You know, still have to make a couple of bob, always, without harming anyone. Yeah. You know, so. But really, round here, what we do need, we need a, an English butchers and a fishmongers. That's what that's what we actually do need, because we've got a holla meat and everything else around here, which is great. It's something different. Yeah. But we need our own. We need to get our own pork, bacon, sausage, pork sausages, beef sausages, and all like that. But it's which is not catered for on the lane at all. But, but we do need one. Yeah. No, they cater for everything else, but they don't cater for the community that was already originally here. I shouldn't say I shouldn't speak really, but that's yeah, such a can. great point that he's making because in Liverpool it's in Toxteth because they're so like it's such a big like Muslim community or various yeah, yeah, different yeah. cultures. You have to go out of Liverpool late to get bacon, to get ham. To yeah. get, that's such a good point. Yeah, same same in Brussels and, and in Belgium. Yeah. Yes. Same you is know, happening, yeah. No, yeah. like even fresh bread. Yeah. We need a bake a proper uh, we used to have a bakery down here years and years ago <coughs> and, and the guy used to live on the premises and he had a, his own oven and he used to actually make his own bread and proper proper bread but you could smell it as you walk past it and say three o'clock in the morning you could smell the fresh bread you know where you want to run in and go give us one of them yeah yeah <laughs> Oh, you can eat one of them just on its own. Mm, it's like mm, gorgeous. Yeah. You know, really. Mm. And that's all. That's why you're from. missing here. Yeah, 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 yeah. But that's what we do need. Yeah. You know, we need to bring back things for us that we've actually lost. You know, you know, mm. uh, the market of it is doing very, very well, but it's not for the likes of us because we used to have a mace across the road. They sold every different type of ham, cheese, everything, you know, big blocks, and you cut it for you how many, how many slices you want, how many blocks you want, and it was all good stuff, you know. You know, they had proper sausage from France, everywhere, all, all mm -hmm. around the world, used to come there. Even the old hams that used to hang up, that was yeah, hanging yeah. up for about 18 months, all smoked and everything else, you were. But there's absolutely good, but there's nothing like that at all. You know, that we can actually get. It's all hala chicken in packets. That it's a rip off meat, it's because they want to charge you. Alright, you don't mind them making a the profit, but when they make them say a hundred percent profit and the thing's only one pound sixty nine or one pound eighty nine. You don't mind anyone making a few bob. But when it's slapping you in the face and ripping you off at the same time, you know, it's not nice. Yeah. It's nice to be nice. I think it's great the biennial. And yeah. more people should get involved, you know, and go and see what it's about. But to me, it's, it's yeah. uh, original people's art and um, passion, you know? Yeah. Art and passion, that goes together to me. Get you up early out of bed to do something. Yeah. You can't sleep, I suppose. I suppose I'm an artist in my own way, but the biennial, I, I, I went to the biennial um, many years ago and I, I was surprised because I've seen, um, I've still got the flyers actually, I've seen an African village built inside a warehouse yeah. down off Jamaica Street and I still got the flight, it was great, and then I went to the Delphi for this um, like outer space convention it was. Yes, yes. Yeah, and um, it was great, you know, oh, all yeah. the different... I went in another, and another one in um, just off where the there's a, a place called um, Lisey Street by the uh, they call the old church and they had a um, 
I displayed it in an exhibition and it was all like just paper on the floor and stuff and there was a guy doing origami and since then all them years ago um, I do origami so it influenced me yeah do you know what I mean the biennial even though you know um, as I say a lot of people don't know about it but I think it's better than any gallery you know like they have in town the Walker Art Gallery and all they might think honestly seriously the biennial is one of the best things that can happen mm. in this city. I'm not just saying that. Yeah. I think it's great. I'm not even an artist. <laughs> <laughs> Are you going this year? Yeah, I'm going to go. Yeah. I'm supposed to, this is my artwork now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. a joke. That's a joke. <laughs> no, of course. But I am going down. I am going yeah. down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is it is it easy to go from Toxa to to, uh, to the centre? or? Yeah, it's not too far. Yeah. In, in fact, it's a great walk. You know, from anywhere, just yeah. to walk from anywhere you are in the city, rather than use the public transport. Walk to town and enjoy yeah. the walk. Have a look at the, the buildings that are around, even the people at artworks themselves. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the big little <laughs> piece of art themselves. Everyone's an individual to me. Every person is a different tone and shade and colour. Do you yeah. know what I'm saying? And that's what makes Liverpool. That's what I might be sounding mad, but... <laughs> yeah. do, do you think sometimes that um, the biennial should come to Toxted and, and have some artwork here? Yeah, definitely, definitely. There should be artwork in, in, in the street. This should, be a, this should be the main art corridor, the way I see it. Yeah. Do you know, this should be the art corridor because this is the the main drive to all the great parks which themselves yeah. are an art in nature do you know what I'm saying an yeah. art of nature or a nature's work of art <laughs> whatever way but yeah they should come down and do something even if it's one thing you know what I mean just yeah. like as I say I got inspired by going you know and I haven't stopped I still can't paint like I'm still drawing <laughs> my six men and, but I love my origami and yeah. I've also taught that little skill to other people yeah. you know what I mean and I found it a way of like if you've got a problem on you know in your mind or go and visit somewhere where there's something different you've never seen before mm -hmm. you know and take ease your mind it mightn't solve the problem but will ease your mind yeah that's nice to <laughs> yeah, say yeah, nice yeah, thing yeah, to say yeah, yeah. But what do you like about Toxted most I mean you live here in the yeah in the I've been born here yeah yeah, yeah 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 you never wanted to never felt like leaving Toxted no well I've been all over the world and I haven't left Toxted because <laughs> every nationality is here for me yeah all the 67 languages get spoken around here I don't know them all yeah. but I know the people and the feeling you know and the beat of the the area and I love it you know what yeah. I, mean? I love this area yeah, I love Liverpool I love being scouts <laughs> yeah. do you, do yeah. you, uh, during the whole time that you lived here do you, do you have the feeling that Toxet stayed the same or has a lot changed no there's a lot changed as I say with all the different yeah, people from all over the world and they, they individually bring their different type of um, new community to an old community so it's always getting renewed yeah. in itself, you know. Yes, good day, boys. Yes, G. Yes, blood. Yes. You know. Yeah. Um, so everybody that comes here brings their piece of, like, ingenuity, their, you know, new way of, like, shaping the community. So the community is always, to me, is always shifting and changing yeah. in a different way. Nobody actually owns a community. The community owns itself. Yeah. And that's the people. And that all involves art. Nobody owns a piece of art. Nobody owns that tree. We all own it. Yeah. And that to me is a piece of art, nature. <laughs> Do you think this is like the, the most beautiful thing about Toxet because of the different nationalities, the different people? Well, it's, the, it's just the way people blend together in that, in that yeah. um, blend that we seem to have, that rapport that, you know, there's no animosity just between anybody you can see from not just the the, the buildings of uh, toxic it's the people itself you know yeah the legacy as opposed that's been left behind from people's ancestors who've been here before as we're picking up their strong spirit and vibe <laughs> <laughs> I gave up on anarchism when I recognised the collective action was better. Yep. So no, there was not one person who put up blocks. Okay, who okay. Who put anti-vandal paint on. In the same way that there was never one person on the picket line and never one person to speak to the papers or the radio because we, we work together. We're a You're community. really, really together. We're yep. a community. Yep. As a community, we got together this as a community. Yes. You know, we've attracted yeah. people to come and take photographs, to interview us and to make sure films. Yeah. 
because it matters, community matters, and it mattered way before Cameron thought about mm -hmm. it, and it mattered way before anything. And the riots, which is what brought about the decay of this area, yep. the riots weren't about people being anarchists. It was about a scream of pain from a society that was treated like shit by anybody with power. Yep. And what happened to this area after that was punishment for the riots. Um, a collective the... mythology that smacks of racism. Yeah, you know, and this whole thing about racism, it doesn't just belong to the police, it belongs to all of society. Mm. And it belongs to society that have got power. And those, one of the things that came out of this area following the riots was the Toxteth alone in the city of Liverpool was the place that embraced and that welcomed and that absorbed everybody. We weren't tolerant because who the hell wants to be tolerated? And I don't want to belong to a British society that tolerates. Because if I don't want to be tolerated, I want to yeah. be welcomed, I want to be part of. And that's what this area is and always has been. Liverpool says it prides itself by saying it's the world in one city. No, it isn't. It's a load of bigots surrounding the central core of the city, which is Toxteth which is Liverpool 8, which is Granby Street and all its rich history. And this is the place that welcomes and protects. So the people of any colour, any creed, any race can move in. And it happens, it happens piecemeal. It happens in waves. As people around the world are hurt, they seek solace in Toxteth. And that's why the City Council want to destroy us. Yeah, yeah. Yes. it was a threat for their power. Yeah, because community isn't a threat, the community is collectivism. It's the ants actually working together and recognising the people move on and change, but you still have a community. A community is not a set load of people. It's, it's an ethos. And it's been within this area for hundreds of years, and it's always been put down on, because the people who live here were honest workmen, the people who built this place were those who were paid to build for others. You know, you know, and they're the descendants of slaves and the descendants of labourers and the descendants of Mongols. Because that's what we are, you have to. Yeah. You know, that's what, that's what a white race is. It's such a mix. We're a Mongol race, but we're a fucking hardy breed because of it. Yeah. You know, and the other people came here because they were brought or they sought solace. Yeah. I know, and that's what this area is, and that's th that is the world on, in one city, but it's here in the heart, and Liverpool City Council, its elected people, its paid millions, have such a negative mythology around this area that they seek to destroy. <laughs> yeah, it's as mindless as the Daleks. <laughs> Loonies are good. Loonies. Yeah. Yeah. So anarchism is not a great thing, but collectivism. Collectivism and a, and a huge amount of love because I'm also a product of the 60s and the 70s. So it's yeah. going to be there. You know, and my role models were Angela Davis and Maya Angelou, as well as Jermaine Greer. Yeah. You know. And they matter. But who heard of Maya Angelou? If you weren't black, who heard of her? You know, but if you lived in this area, God help you if you didn't know your stuff. Because yeah. you respected each other and you only respect people when you learn about them. Yeah, ignorance breeds contempt. And all I can say is the people in power are terribly ignorant. <laughs> you know, as you know, there's a lot of um, renovation going yes. on in the area. Mm. And as you know, these these streets have been saved. Yes. And uh, there's supposed to be a developer going to do up the rest of the the, the terraced houses. Okay. Hopefully, uh, that's in the pipeline. We haven't heard very much about that yet. And it's, it's more or less just for over the years what's been done in the planting up of the area and what people have done. People that are living in the area, the community that's living in these streets. Mm. Uh, what we've done to make the uh, environment where we live in a lot nicer to live in, you know, as you know ourselves, our street there yes. with the blacked out walls and all this now has all changed because yes. we've saved that street. And it's just like a, a history, you know, like a film that, you know, when the developer come, this won't exist anymore. You know, all this will have disappeared. And it's more or less just like a documentary film about what 
did exist in the area. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. All this, because no doubt, as you know, all this planting up when they start renovating will not be here. So yeah. it's more or less like a little record is, of what has been done over the years by, all this, uh, yes. by this group it was, here. Uh, I, I've seen this uh, a couple of months ago, the planting of, of the, the houses, also the empty house. It was a kind of a protest. Uh, no, th this was uh, more or less, it was Hel Eleanor's brainchild uh, over six, six seven years ago, because this is a well-established planted up area over the years. Uh, Germain Street and Beaconsfield Street have just come in at the latter past couple of years. But this is a well-established one, so it's more or less the film that's been made now. It's a documentary film. It's like an archive, uh, archive of what people had done in the street, uh, what was happening mm. in the street at the time, uh, from start to finish, because when the developers do come in, this will have just disappeared, like everything will just have disappeared, yeah. like it's never existed. So it's just like a little history of how, it's, how it began and up to the present day, you know, of what's yeah, happening. Yeah. So that's what it's more or less like. So, so I, di I didn't get it right. Uh, so are they planning to demolish also this no, street? No, 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 no. These streets have been, are going to be redeveloped, you know, like what they're doing in Beaconsfield Street where they have uh, uh, the, our terrace house across from where, where we live. We live on this side, uh, myself and, and the lady yeah. who's taking the camera. Um, they were going to demolish them, but now uh, it's all they, we sort of blocked them actually, I think, over the years. And they decided that they would um, rebuild the houses sort of mm. from the back, but leave the front of them because they, ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. they can't change the facade of the houses. Yeah. They, so they, all they could do was knock all the backs down and rebuild new from yeah. the back. So the same is going to be done with these houses here. Yeah. Uh, the only street that we couldn't save the Victorian houses up there on the corner. We yeah, I've seen it. There yeah. a while ago, yes. but we couldn't save them. Um, Juicy Street, they knocked one part of Juicy Street down. And the other part, I do believe, is earmarked to be demolished because they yeah. reckon they can't do no more. Had they done years ago, they could have been yeah. saved. So that will have disappeared completely. That will just leave Germain Street, Cairn Street and Beaconsfield Street as the last existing yeah. row of terraced houses in this Pacific area here. Yeah, and and the plans for the new house is it is it? Uh, no, they're going to be renovating these houses like they're doing in in Beaconsfield Street, which yeah. they have started already. So to get to uh, families back here to to well, meet. Well, that yeah. is to get the community back. to get it back yeah. to it. This it was a vibe was a vibrant community, um, and it was uh, you know sort of fractured. Of a lot of elements over the years have fractured it, and the idea is to bring back the community. Yeah. You know th this this place here, this area here that we live in, because we care about our community here. Yeah. Regardless, we we are a a mixture of various people from various walks of life, various um, cultures, and for that to be destroyed. Yeah. Granby was a vibrant area, shopping area, you had everything you needed, you had different cultures, you had... It was a colourful area, pardon the pun. Yeah, it was a colourful area yeah. and, and the community uh, was totally fractured. Yeah, how long you've been living for in this area? <coughs> In, in Beaconsfield Street's going on 40 years now. 40 years. And, yeah. and during in that, that time, what, what was... During that time, uh, uh, it was a vibrant place. In, in the 60s, I remember, in the 60s, Granby Street, you, you didn't have to go out of the area to do any shopping. You have every kind of shop, sold everything. You didn't have to go anywhere. Now, as you walk up Granby Street, now it, it's, it's depressing. Yeah. All you have is new build. <laughs> like matchbox houses, Lego land, I call it. It's not the Granby that I remember. Yeah. As you can understand, I, I'm, I'm not from Liverpool. I was born in Ireland, but I remember this country because I was 12 years of age when I came over here with my family. Yeah. And it's my home. It's my uh, community. It's, you know, you, you adapt to the area that you live in you, you, yeah. you, and you care about your community 
Was it was it hard for you when you were 12 years old to come in the community? Was well, that something? Well, I think I think no, I think like everything else. I mean, times have changed. I think like everything else. Um, if you live in a different country and you come to live in another country, you must adapt to mm. the cultures and the ways of the country. Was that it as, you, as you adopt as your as your home? I class this as my home. I mean, I live longer here than I lived in my own country. Yeah. 12. I am 65. So that's well and truly over 50 years and that. Yeah. We went to school here. I had to adapt. It took me all years. It took me two years to adapt. I go to school like, a, like any child that comes yeah. from a different, different... All right, my culture is not much different than the culture of, you know, yeah. this country. But there are a lot of other children that come from other countries. They have to, you know this into the culture of that country but also they've got to maintain their own culture as well so we have to fit in we have to you know fit into their culture as well and yeah. that helps the reason it's a multicultural area so you've got to all combine together yeah in other words live together yeah and that makes your community yeah. if you can't live together you can't call yourself a member of the community you must care about your community yeah. and the cultures of the various people that make up that community. I mean, you can't have a community all just of one, 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 one race, mm. you, a, a, a multicultural area, a multicultural community, and that makes it a lot easier yeah. and a lot more entertaining and a lot more interesting because everyone has different different uh, histories and different you know from their various countries that they come from and that's what makes us all we go on to this little melting pot and we all gel together in this area hopefully yeah happily <laughs> and contentedly <laughs> can I, I ask you one more question if, if you would be like on on, on uh, television for um, let's say national television what kind of um, um, thing you you would like to say to to people is there something that you're missing on television right now or that you would say, I, I, I want to see this more, or I want to say this on television? Um, that's a bit confusing for me, that question. Mm. What would I say if I was, what I would like to see? I would like to see, um, I mean, it's a big, it's a big uh, thing to ask, but I doubt if we, we'll ever see it, but I think it's, it's up to the people themselves. That um, we all lived, I mean, we're all on this earth, to live together, we all must learn to share. Uh, less more, less hate. You know, I mean, everything. The emphasis now, when you look at the television now, it's all on religions, people's religion. I mean, to me, I mean, we're on this earth together. We don't stay forever. We all go the one way. We all die at the end of the day, or be by what means, but we all die at the end of the day. Uh, Nobody's different than the next person. You know, mm. uh, I think there's too much emphasis on people's religion and the colour of people's skin. Yeah. Which I find that uh, in the media you get a lot of this. Um, and people's cultures, how yeah. a person lives. I think it should be live and let live. Yeah. And all try and live together, which is very uh, is a very big thing to ask, isn't it? But I don't think we ever could because we've got so many warmongers in the world today, which uh, jumping on the bandwagon of um, oh, this one, that one is the religion. They're not they're not centred on the uh, on, on the the real reason. The always either it's religion, political, or the colour of a person's skin. Yeah. I think that that shouldn't be too much of that on the television, really. We're all God's creatures, we're all the same, regardless of whether we're blue, green, black, yellow, whatever. We all go together. We all die. Can't live forever, just because I'm, I'm white and my friend over there is black. Doesn't mean to say that how many better than she is. Yeah. I'll die, she'll die. We all rot. We all bleed the same colour. Yeah. My, blood, my blood's not green. It's red. <laughs> a pint of my blood will save her life, a pint of her blood will save my life. Yeah. See? I don't care. At the end of the day, someone's blood's going to save my life. I'm not mm. going to stand up and say, excuse me, I don't want her blood. <laughs> no, no, but it's true, you get people that do think yeah, about yeah. things like that, which I think yeah. is irrelevant to it anyway, but that's it.